think the only thing left to do is lips and powder, so I can go ahead and switch. <laughs> they have a contract? Yeah, I like that. I like thinking that they have a contract. I know. Give me one second. Oh, look at that, Tinkerbell. Somebody felt bad for you. Thank you for the bits. DV. All right, so here's the Cheerios. And make it rain. And there's still Cheerios caught on coats. Still. You'd think I would have taken care of that by now. So. So we have some time. The next step we're going to do is set up bingo. And then... Oh yeah, Make It Rain totally goes in the bingo for more than one reason tonight. You've been super excited about this launch, Refs Matt. For those of you that have never seen me do my makeup on camera, what I'm doing is literally just applying translucent powder to make my face less shiny. And I have a mirror like right here, which is why I'm looking over in this direction. break down and buy more bits. There's a way to earn bits, but I forget how. Um, I think Dr. Pamela has a link on her, on her Twitch channel. And I know she feels dirty about having it. Like there. Oh, this brush needs cleaned. I can feel it. Um, and we had made, well, she had made the decision to not post that link on this one. Ah, okay. Hey, how's the party? I heard I heard there was uh, some revelry going on. Yeah, I should be able to remove my makeup with that one. It's a party. Oh, well, you know, it happens. Okay. I know, probably won't look too, too much different to all y'all at home, on the go, wherever you are, but it does make a little bit of a difference. Okay, oh, I forgot one. All right, so put all this stuff away. I'm sure it's getting more party-like by the minute. She is being very patient. Um, she's been patient. Hey, thanks for the follow, Pagan God. So this is what happens when things, you know, alerts come across my screen. <coughs> hey, I didn't ask for that, now did I? So here's the Cheerios and make it rain. Normally I do ask the dogs to speak, but um, I'm going to try to discourage that because favorite human has to open in the morning. And he just went to bed and he has to be up in like five hours. So we're going to discourage the dog from barking. He, once he's asleep, he'll sleep through everything. And I do mean everything. So, but I still try not to disturb him too much. So cute puppers, I know they are the cutest. So the white fluffy one that is on camera right now, his name is Puck, as in hockey puck or Midsummer's Night Dream Puck. And the other one is um, Tinkerbell, like, you know, Peter Pan. Uh, Tinker came kind of with her name. Tinker was called Tink by uh, her breeder because she, I didn't get her till she was four months, which is actually kind of old for a puppy. Normally you get them at like two, six, between six and eight weeks old. So that's about two months. I didn't get her till she was four months. I had a thing about changing. I, my family has a thing about changing names for pets once we've adopted them. So I, instead of calling her Jasmine, I just called her Tinkerbell. And I, I think Tink fits her better anyways. Um, and because Tinker came first and we wanted to stick with the um, fairy theme at the time, um, we chose, well, I chose Puck, so my mom's like it has to be a dog name that 
is easy to pronounce because I may have named a cat Scherzo and he ended up ge being called um, Shathid was how we referred to him. Yeah, she is, dachshunds are great. She is, she is great. The only thing I would do again is get uh, pet insurance for her from the jump. So pull up Bingo Baker because Tinkerbell has had two back surgeries and normally when they have back surgery they only have one but she got unlucky and had to have two. So and that is stupid expensive. I do not recommend it. Um, do not recommend. So, okay, so that's up. And then what we normally watch with Chrome. So let me open up Chrome and load up the webcast. And I don't have um, anything up yet. So let's see, what is it? Rocket Lab? I think it's Rocket Lab. Mm. Live stream. Pull this up on YouTube. Come on. Why won't you let me watch it on YouTube? There it goes. So, I'm working on setting everything up right now so you can see what I'm seeing. And it usually takes a second or two for me to get completely organized. So thank you for your patience. Properties. Chrome. There we go. And that does not need to be that big. All right, hold on. Well, I think I know why I had it that big last time, but that's okay. So as proof, of what's going on. Here's what I have up on my screen so far as far as Rocket Lab. Um, the window is enormous, ginormous, uh, because we were watching a webinar uh, and I never adjusted it. So what I'm going to do now that I've shown you that this is up there and it says it's going to be in 31 minutes, more or less. Now we're gonna switch over to Bingo Baker and I'm going to pull chat back up because we are going to create chat, or we are going to uh, create bingo together. And yes, pet insurance, as Veronica Cure says, is good, a good idea for almost all pure breeds. Um, I know someone whose husky lost an eye. I don't know what happened to make it lost, lose an eye, especially since that person was very concerned about um, bloat. Very, very concerned about bloat. And here, you know, their dog ended up losing an eye. All right, so. Make it rain. Rocket launch. Bingo. All right, so <clears throat> first of all, we have make it rain. And see if I can make. That looks like that'll work well. So make it rain, dogs barking, because the dogs are almost always going to bark. Lift off, nominal, rocket lab. Um, I'm gonna pull up Wikipedia. And we're going to look at rocket lab. There we go. Yeah, you guys know what I'm after. Electron, Rutherford, Engine. I can't remember. Do they mention uh, 3D print at all? So Max Q and T minus. Not T minus. Uh, T minus. Do 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 do. He uses RP1 and locks electric pump. Shh. 
sheep. Are you sure you want to do this to yourself, Russ Matt? Are you sure you want to do this to yourself? Electric pump. Batteries. Um, they still use RP1 and locks. Plug in payload. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. See? Plug in payload. Are you sure you don't want to change that to just payload? No, we're not going. Hey, Rue, so this is a electron launch. So instead of. Um, I don't even know why this one feels weird. Because um, it should be. Unless it got. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. I was like, what's wrong with this? There we go. That's better. Um, copy transform. Is this the launch site for the sheep? I don't know. Are there sheep on the launch site? Because Ref's Matt said sheep. If you guys really want sheep, we'll add sheep. I just don't know if you really want that that bad. New Zealand, that's a good one to add. Um, uh, it's Black Sky is one of the payloads, and Acrux is a Acrux one is another payload. Put orbit. Restaurant says it's the world's greatest launch complex and that it looks like it really looks like New Zealand Hobbiton set or the Grey Havens perhaps. I remember one launch, the launch site site was right next to the sheep pasture. Mmm, this is not a SpaceX launch. There there may not be signal launch or signal uh, lost rue. I'm not voting for sheep, just saying. You want to, I'll meet you halfway and put any animal on camera. We've done this one before. Um, I don't know if there's cameras. I don't remember because it's been a minute. Kick stage. Do they have a kick stage? Um, space flight. I mean, okay. Mahia Peninsula, yes, they usually mention that. Curie engine? Wait, is it a Curie engine or a Rutherford engine? Oh, the third stage has the Rutherford engine, or the Curie engine. Is there going to be a third stage on this flight? Because that's what we really need to know. Okay, so if you're reading... If you're reading the press kit, then that does have all the stages. Okay, cool. Space, oh, space flight as in the company, duh. I hear favorite human laughing. No, no, Puck, it's just favorite human laughing. It's okay. He has a very distinctive laugh. ULA sniper, no. SOCOM or Prometheus? I don't I don't know what, what either of those are, but if they're mentioned in the press kit. Yep, I have I have the Acrux one cube set on here. SOCOM. And Oh! That's the other I didn't realize there was a third payload. Look at me. Prometheus. Um, what was I doing? I have like a lot of things going on in my head and not enough of them. All right. Transform, please transform, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't do first stage separation. So we didn't do Mecco. We didn't do Seco. First stage 
Separation. Does the second stage separate? Okay. Separation. Fairing. Separation. Yep. Mm. I'm going to put hold or any mention of a hold or delay because they have had to delay the flight. Hold or delay. Um... Oh, two Prometheus CubeSats. Yes, we have T minus. T minus is in the second row. It's right here. Um, so right now, I'm going to list off of I'm not even gonna read that out loud, refs, Matt. But I, it's interesting. Um, so I'm gonna read off what I have now, just in case it's hard to see. So I have Make It Rain, Dogs Barking, Liftoff, Nominal, Rocket Lab, Electron, Rutherford Engine, Max-Q, T-Minus, um, Electric Pump, Batteries, RP-1, Free Space, Locks, Plug-In Payload, New Zealand, Black Sky, A-Crux, Orbit, Any Animal on Camera, Kickstage, Spaceflight, Mahia Peninsula, Curie, SOCOM slash Prometheus, Mecco, Seco, first stage separation, second stage separation, fairing separation, any mention of holder delay. Oh. Um, maybe that's why I didn't know about it when I did my thing. Launch complex one slash... I don't even know how to pronounce that station. Mm, yeah, that might be why I don't know about the Prometheus CubeSats. <sighs> oh, ni, oh, oh, na, ni, uh, oh, na, ni, oh, na, nui, oh, na, nui. Okay. I was like, that's, that can't be right. Um... And the third stage uses an unspecified green monopropellant. Which I find it odd that they don't mention what it is. <sighs> okay. So are we happy with this? Um, let me flip back over to the other thing, see if I can see it on this. We have 21 minutes still. Yawning not allowed. It's kind of late. Deorbit. There we go. That's a good one. A deorbit. Yeah, I know yawning's not allowed, but it's hard not to. <laughs> Sun synchronous. I have orbit. Do you want to make it more specific? than orbit as sun synchronous orbit. You want to? Yeah, let's do that. Synchronous orbit. This puck hunts for Cheerios. Do, 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 do. Alpha Centauri synchronous? No, Rude, no. Just no. Hmm. Battery jettison. I'm going to toss in 3D printed just in case. Oh, it's a favorite human.
Hello, favorite human. No, you're not not on camera. You're fine. That's good. It's for the greatest good. All the greater good. You literally have to be behind me to be on camera. Uh, oh. What are you looking for? It was on the couch. Yeah, they do talk about 3D printing on the website, so I feel like it's it's uh that's a safe thing to, to talk about. Um, so yeah, um, you found it? Good. All right, so if nobody else has any other suggestions, I will give you know, another couple minutes. Love you! Please do one for the extra battery. I had battery jettison. Uh, we could do battery hot swap. That's, space gold is, wow. Gem Doctor says, there's a lot of rubbish being talked about about the supposed golden asteroid, but nobody has mentioned the cost of recovery. Anyone who wants to spend a million per ounce for space gold, there is somebody out there in this world that would, would, uh, uh, that would do that. Um, yeah, I have the battery jettison, but I think they also, they'll probably also talk about the battery hot swap. Um, and I think they talk about what the batteries are made of, which is lithium so I feel like because we're all kind of running out of ideas that we're just gonna call it here so more bits because Tinker's stealing souls Ooh. here's the Cheerios and make it rain. <laughs> Thanks for the bits, Veronica. Uh, okay, so I'm going to hit generate card. And it's going to take me a minute. Twofer, yeah. Well, you don't have the thing yet, so it doesn't count. It doesn't count. So I have to print out the call list. Print, print. And then, what is it? Um, commands, edit, play, bingo. Actually, hold on. All right, commands, edit. Play, bingo. Current bingo card. Okay. And chat. Oh. So close and yet so far. All right, there we go. So there, there's the new bingo card. I am going to go ahead and grab the call sheet off of the printer and I will be right back. Hey Kevlar, how you doing? Yes, yes, that is the evil thing about having you guys help me uh, 
make the bingo is that, you know, you can make it as easy or as hard on yourselves as you wish. I try to steer y'all in the right direction. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So. Okay. Put that over there. Now you can find a pen or a pencil or something. No, doggy cam does not count as an animal on camera. At least I chose stuff from the press kit and not cheap. Yeah, press kit's usually a safe place to, to grab stuff from. Um, realized we didn't have everything up. And yeah. Yeah, so we have... Although I, I guess the square does technically say any animal on camera. So we have 13 minutes. Oof, oof, oof. Um. Oof. I'm waiting for the rocket. Yeah. Oh, Rocket Lab does have a Reddit, a subreddit. Good, that is good to do. You're right, Rue, there is nothing I can do to stop you. So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, it does say any animal. Um, hey, Walker, how you doing? How was the Uno game? I had thought about picking up Uno and I was about ready to buy the Uno game and then I saw what time it was and was like, oh, I have to start getting ready for the launch. <coughs> Friendships will end. <laughs> oh my. So normally we've, as Cosmo Quest community, we've played Uno on uh, tabletop simulator, uh, Myth Town and, uh, or Walker and the Myth Town gang have been playing a standalone Uno game. So, almost three hours. Oh my goodness. That's, that's a lot. Oh, that's a lot, and none of none of that playtime will count towards Steam's racing thingy right now, or whatever. Or Team Corgi is definitely losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's part of me that's like, I should go and get coffee. And there's another part of me that's. Yeah, I saw that mess down. Um, part of me is like, I should get coffee. And the other part of me is like, no, I want to sleep tonight. So. Yeah. But for those of you that aren't aware, Steam is having its summer sale, uh, today, or right now. Um, if you're in our Discord, I linked a bunch of games that the community plays in the game and game the games and gamers channel um, a lot of games are on sale right now so things that would be you know normally uh, kind of prohibitively expensive are much you know much less expensive so this is the time to buy games in the past uh, Steam did things where with like trading cards and things like that. This year they're doing something with races. It's not so much a 4th of July sale, Refs Matt. It's Steam has a winter sale and a summer sale. And it's not even an end of the month sale. It will be all the way through part of July, I think. I think it's through July. It's just, it's literally a summer sale. That's all it is. It's not associated with any holiday um, or anything like that. Um, they do have flash sales. Steam, Steam also has a missing third sale. Um, they do have flash sales, but, um, oh wow, that really brightened up my screen for everybody, didn't it? 
Hey, bad panda bear. Hey, open cage. Um, they do have, um, I'm trying so hard to think and I'm, I'm tired. Um, they do have flash sales, like PlayStation has flash sales, but, um, no, they just have sales twice a year. Summer sale and winter sale. Other thing is go on sale, but this is when a lot of games are on sale, so. Hooray! Okay, so, for those of you that have never played bingo, I guess we should go over this, huh? So, this is what the bingo card looks like. I'm gonna make it full screen again. So, in order to play bingo, this is what you'll see right away. Is just two yellow boxes, a blurred out thing on the bottom, and uh, in order to get your own card, you literally click generate card. Boom, there's a card. If you want it full screen now, <clears throat> it just gives you some info in this top yellow box. <coughs> it says, this is your own unique bingo card. Click a box to mark it. Click a box again to unmark it. If you win, say bingo. If you're playing this game over multiple days, bookmark this page or email the URL to yourself so you can get back to this card. We're not playing over multiple days. Um, Planetary Pan added another game to the Discord. Mythtown comments, good, good game, fun to mess with the universe. So now I'm curious to see what they says. And yes, if I say it, it counts, which will always lead into people baiting me into saying it. Um, if it's on screen, it counts. We're pretty lenient. We're going to start off with a uh, line bingo. So that's any horizontal line, any vertical line, any diagonal line. And um, yeah, the center square is free, like always. Some of these other squares are essentially free. Like, my dogs always bark. They always bark. Don't you, Tinkerbell? Um, and yeah, but as they're, we'll put them in. No, it doesn't count right now. The dogs actually have to bark. Um, We'll, we'll put it in all caps in chat and you just exit off of your own. I probably won't have this card up throughout the game because simply because we have way more than 25 squares or 24 terms. We have 36 terms. So, and I have a printed out call sheet in front of me with all 36 terms. Um, so yeah. There we go, this this is it. A lot of these terms are common to many launches, which is why, you know, when I started creating the card, it's okay, we're gonna use this term, this term, this term, this term, this term. Oh, oops. I'm just trying to play with my thing and I knocked over something else on my desk. Um, and some of these are unique to the Electron and some of these are unique to the mission. Like, you know what's going up. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go ahead and actually not do all that because it's it's making it do weird things now. So I'm just gonna kind of push that back to the back and we'll have this up. So we have about five more minutes so if you think you need to go to the bathroom within the next, I don't know, hour or you have to go to the bathroom now, go now. Um, the launch isn't, the launch window doesn't open for another 25 minutes. Um, it may launch right away, it may not. I think this is a four hour launch window, so we might be here a while. But yeah, if you think you need to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom. This message brought to you by the Ward Beecher Planetarium. Ooh. Veronica's mapping, that's actually a good point. I thought about starting mapping, or starting, um, starting marking a rock, or uh, a rock, starting marking Bennu, but I, I did not. So, 
while I have this up, we'll go to bennu.cosmoquest.org. Because this is Chrome, I'm not logged in. Yay, you marked a rock. I'm so happy. So we have, um, that's really cool, Planetary Pan. Planetary Pan says, I shared out the request for more Bennu mappers and got a few newbies. One I know is already marking. We've had a few new people join Discord today. Um, yeah. Planet Labs? Who is Planet Labs? You mean Rocket Lab? <laughs> um, so yeah, we're trying to map Bennu. We have a deadline of <clears throat> July 10th. And we are... Where's my calculator? It's it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, Riftsman. I understand because I'm, I'm tired. So there's a total of 45 five so four thousand five hundred nine images divide that by two that's two hundred twenty that's two thousand two hundred fifty four and a half you are being really noisy today tinker um and we have nineteen fifty three done so we are 302 images away from being halfway. Once we get to halfway, um, once we get to halfway, we will have a celebration stream. We are trying to get all of this done before the 10th. And to make things worse or better, um, we're not going to be streaming next week, like at all. Is today Friday? Today's Friday. Today's now technically Saturday. Um, so, yeah, this is the last stream that you'll see. Um, this is probably the last stream that you'll see, depending on how I feel tomorrow, um, depending on how much I sleep. We can do a rock uh, marking support stream. Um, I know, Tinker. You're, you're being really, you're being really noisy. Um, yeah, if I don't do a rock marking support stream, this is the last stream you're going to see until we come back from our break on... I have to check the calendar now. On July 7th. Or are we going to do it July 8th? It might be... We might, we might not be back until July 8th. Um, we'll be back the 7th or the 8th because uh, 4th of July, which is a major holiday here in America, is on Thursday, which is kind of awkward. And um, I don't know if people are going to be still celebrating into the weekend. So if I'm here on the 7th, I'm here on the 7th. Um, if I'm not, then you'll see somebody on the 8th. Stumbles in and drops in on the floor. <laughs> Gasping for air. You made it. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. So we were just talking about Bennu and uh, how we're not quite there to halfway. So um, I would rather watch a rocket launch than listen to um, listen to things go off over and over and over again. Well, it says they're live. So let's start. transferring all the things. And, uh, no, I would rather, um, I'd rather watch the rocket launch than listen to fireworks. My neighbors started setting off fireworks earlier this week, too, and I'm just, I'm not amused. And I don't want to be that neighbor that's like, yo, can you guys dial it back? But, uh, Fourth of July is not fun for me. And one of my classmates are, um, one of my classmates invited a group of us down out of town. So 
Yeah, fireworks are illegal in many parts of the U.S. Owning the fire- or setting off fireworks, or the caliber of fireworks that a lot of my neighbors like to set off is technically illegal, but everybody looks the other way. And it's because Ohio, where I'm at in Ohio, there's not a strong risk of forest fire, I guess, is the way to put it. And yeah, but the sound of fireworks is not good for pets. It's not good for dogs. It's not good for people with anxiety and PTSD and um, like I like them when they're really, like Sock and Cat says, they're pretty when they're really far away. Um, like I enjoy watching them, I don't enjoy hearing them. So if, if they're really far away and I have a good viewpoint, great, awesome. If I'm close up, it's just a really unpleasant. So yeah, a classmate invited a bunch of us up to his place. 4th of July, so we might do that this year. Yeah, right, not it is pretty much like everything's exploding. Alright, so here we go. You can start, um, I guess I can turn that other thing off, huh? start doing Mingo pretty much, kind of. Not really, though. Um, creamy goodness, I don't remember why. Hello and welcome to the live broadcast of Rocket Lab's 7th Electron mission, the Make It Rain mission for spaceflight. It's the afternoon of June 29th down here in New Zealand, and we're approximately 20 minutes away from liftoff out of Launch Complex 1 on the Mahia Peninsula. My name is Max Munsey. I'm part of the Launch Operations team at Rocket Lab, and I'm joined by the Mission Control team right here in Auckland. So we're excited to have you guys join us for yet another Electron mission. Before we get into the details of today's mission, we'll take a quick look back at our most recent launch. Just last month, we launched That's a Funny Looking Cactus for our friends over at the Space Test Program. Other than being Electron's Electron's first night launch, it was Electron's heaviest to date, with a total payload mass of around 180 kilograms. So let's watch the replay of that amazing liftoff. Four, three, two, one. First motion. And what a beautiful launch it was. The mission also maintained Rocket Lab's heritage of mission success and brought our total count of satellites deployed up to 28. Tonight's launch will take that count into the 30s. Are those sheep in the distance? These like white dots, are those sheep? The sun's about to set in New Zealand, but Electron is vertical and ready for flight. At the moment, we're just waiting for the launch director's final go, no-go poll, so let's listen in to hear if we are go for launch. OK, 
10. All stations, this is flight on mission court. Stand by for final pole for launch. RCO. RCOs go for launch. LD. LDs go for launch. And executive. Executive is going for launch. Roger that, thank you. You heard it, folks. The launch tracker has given us the go for launch. So we're just about 14 minutes away until T0. Liquid oxygen filling procedures began at around T minus two and a half hours, so now both of Electron stages are fully fueled. Those white stripes that you see around Electron indicate where the chilled liquid oxygen is icing up over the vehicle's black carbon composite structure. Uh, liquid oxygen counts as LOX. And, yeah, T minus. I mean, T minus is up on the screen. I think those are sheep. They are totally sheep. Look, they're moving. The white dots are moving. They are sheep. Repeat, we have sheep. It is pretty nice weather. I can't believe there's sheep so close to the launch pad. Do they normally? They don't normally get snow, do they? I don't know, creamy, creamy goodness. I don't know if they even tell the sheep there's a launch. Yeah, 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 Rue, I know. Are you sure you want to put sheep? Today's mission is Rocket Lab's seventh electron launch overall and our third for 2019. The mission was procured by a rideshare provider called Spaceflight, and it's Electron's first commercial rideshare mission since our third launch, which was dubbed its business time back in November of 2018. We've called this mission Make It Rain in a nod to just how much it rains in Spaceflight's home city of Seattle. So approximately 12 minutes from now, Electron will lift off, carrying seven satellites to low Earth orbit, including Black Sky's Global 3 Microsat, two Prometheus satellites for the U.S. Special Operations Command, and also a few others. One of these is actually a student-built CubeSat, the Acrux-1 spacecraft, which was built by students of the Melbourne Space Program. This means we're launching government, commercial, and educational payloads on this flight. So we're thrilled to be opening access to space for such a diverse set of customers. For a little more about the payloads we're flying, here's Spaceflight. Spaceflight's mission is to make space accessible for everyone. We hope organizations get their satellites on orbit by offering rideshare and mission management services for small satellites. We work with nearly all launch vehicles around the world, which gives our customers greater flexibility, minimizing the negative impacts of delays, especially valuable for organizations launching multiple spacecraft. Our rideshare service makes launch easy and affordable, lowering the barriers to entry and ensuring you can get to space on time and on budget. We're excited to be adding Rocket Lab's Electron to the list of launch vehicles we work with. The Electron allows small satellite operators to get on orbit quickly. This upcoming launch will be the first of many launches with Rocket Lab. This mission, appropriately called Make It Rain, will bring huge opportunities for our customers. It's a rideshare mission carrying seven satellites from Black Sky, SOCOM, Swarm Technologies, Melbourne Space Program, and others. We're excited about our partnership with Rocket Lab and for their regular cadence of launches. So thank you to Rocket Labs from our Seattle headquarters. And now, let's make it rain. Are they going up Flaps to open. Proceeding with strong back retract. BMS flight on mission code. Go ahead. 
Please confirm all separation events are armed. All separation events are armed. And RF flight mission. Go ahead. Confirm the S band has been switched to high power. Confirmed. So now we're approximately 10 minutes until launch, and you notice that the strong back has started retracting from electron. This structure supports the vehicle while it's upright, but it's retracted shortly before launch to clear the way for electron's nine Rutherford engines at liftoff. Flight avian mission. Go ahead. HPBH fans are disabled. Copy that, and heaters. And heaters. Thank you. Flight puffin mission. Go ahead. Camera recordings are recycled. Thank you. Avionics flight on mission. Right, Avionics. Please confirm the stage 2 battery hot swap is ready. Stand by. Flight confirming hot swap ready. Thank you and confirm stage 2 HVB1 and HVB2 are enabled and HVB3 is disabled. Now, if you've watched Rocket Lab launches before, you're no stranger to our kick stage, but what you may not know is that it formed the basis of Photon, which is Rocket Lab's newly announced satellite bus. Our mission has always been to make dedicated, frequent, and reliable access to space a reality for small satellites, but launch was just the first step in that mission. Today, we're not only launching small satellites, we're designing and building them as well. With Photon, small satellite operators can come to us with just their sensor, payload, or even just an idea, and then we'll take care of the rest. We'll build and launch a satellite to their unique specifications that can support missions in low Earth orbit for up to five years. Enough from me, though. Let's hear about Photon directly from the head of the team that's bringing it to life. My name is Grant Bonham. I'm the chief engineer for space systems here at Rocket Lab. The canonical way that people have done space missions in the past has been they go out and they buy a payload from one vendor, they'll buy a satellite platform or bus from another vendor, they'll buy a launch from a third party or sometimes through an intermediary or a broker, and it's like herding cats. You've got to pull all of that together into a program. It becomes very expensive, very difficult, and you lose focus on the thing that actually matters. By being a one-stop shop for launch and a satellite platform, we can really help customers hyper-focus on the part of their program that makes them money, which is their payload. We can take care of pretty much the entire solution for people, and that simplifies dramatically how they go and procure space missions. The third stage, the kick stage of the Electron launch vehicle, is a really impressive vehicle all by itself. The next logical step for us is to incorporate power generation capabilities and augment it in a few other ways to turn it into a fully featured satellite. And that's a relatively straightforward step that had always been part of the master plan for Rocket Lab. So right now, by evolving our kick stage into Photon, we can offer really a huge amount of configurability for customers depending on what they need. Photon can carry a wide range of different instruments and payloads, anything from telescopes that can take pictures of the Earth, weather monitoring equipment, even to do space-based internet access for people. And in support of that, Photon offers a wide range of different subsystems and configurations. But in general, it gives radiation-tolerant avionics extremely high-precision attitude control or spacecraft pointing, um, high power generation capability, a great propulsion system, and overall the ability to communicate that data that an instrument or a payload generates down to the Earth at very high rate. People have been talking about operationally responsive space for decades, and now it's actually here. Thanks, Grant. Rocket Lab's future is certainly going to be interesting with the addition of Photon to our lineup. Now, being situated on a Pacific coastal point, New Zealand's Mahia Peninsula is a beautiful spot for Electron to launch from. But we're also incredibly excited to soon be able to call Virginia, USA, our second home for launch. Construction on Rocket Lab's Launch Complex 2 at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, or MARS for short, is on track for completion later this year. So technically, we'll be launching from Mars soon. While Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand will always remain our high-volume launch site where we can launch up to 120 times per year, Launch Complex 2 can support up to 12 launches a year and is tailored specifically for government missions. So we can't wait to bring elect Electron launches to United States soil. Thank you, SEO. FSO flight on mission. FSO go. I can confirm the FTS is on internal power. Check tone should be up continuously from now. Copy. FSO, please enable FTS failsafe and confirm. FSO copies. Failsafe has been toggled. Copy that and FTS flight on mission. Go flight. Please confirm FTS is green on internal power. 
FTS is green and go for flight. And all stations, this is flight on mission. From now, there should be no red flags on your LCCs. FSO, RCO mission cord. This is FSO. Confirm flight safety is green. Flight safety is green. Copy. All stations on mission, range is green, auto sequence is armed. Copy, RCO. So we're at around T minus three minutes until our target liftoff for today's Make It Rain mission. So I'm going to hand it over to the team in mission control and we can follow the remainder of the count. Flo, this is flight on mission cord. Air flight. Please disable power pack HVAC and confirm. Stand by. Power pack HVAC is off. And LD flight on mission. Copy. Vehicle is ready. Okay, copy. VMS, LD on mission. Go ahead. Uh, confirm, uh, please confirm flight computer as go are green. Flight computer as goes are green. Okay, and please lock the sequence and confirm. Auto sequence is locked. And to all operators, we are go for auto sequence start at T minus two minutes. Avionics, fly on mission. Right, avionics. Please confirm all AV bats have been switched to internal power. Vehicles on internal power. RCO flight mission. Go ahead. Confirm ground power is disabled. All ground power is down. Roger that, and all stations. Uh, the advised vehicles now on internal power. Bye. Pressing locks. Pills copies. Please disable anti geysering and confirm. All stage anti geysering is disabled. Copy that. Stage one flight on mission. Flight stage one. Please confirm stage one is pressed. Stage one is pressed. High flow engine purge. Stage two flight mission. Flight stage two. Please confirm stage two is pressed. Stage two is pressed. Commanding deluge on. Gallage running. Ready in GNC systems. Re readying engines. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, Ignition. one.
Lift off, make us get the bed. And we have liftoff of the Make It Rain mission on Electron. Shortly, the vehicle will come up against max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure, where the forces against Electron will hit their peak. So let's listen in for that call. Uh, I'll be dragging downrange. Coming up on maximum dynamic pressure. One minute, stage one remaining. Stage 1 propulsion remains nominal. Shortly, Electron will go through a series of major milestones in quick succession. Starting with main engine cutoff, or MECO, the nine Rutherford engines on Electron's first stage will chatting. shut down in preparation for our first of two separations. Following the separation of Electron's first and second stages, we'll see ignition of the vacuum-optimized Rutherford engine on Electron's second stage. Electron's second stage, carrying the kick stage and its payloads, will then continue onto an elliptical orbit. Our pack CO2 succeeded. 15 seconds remaining. Entering stage 1 burnout detect mode. Stage 1 Miko. Stage separation succeeded. Stage 1 Miko. As you just saw and probably heard from the applause, we have had main engine cutoff. Electron's first and second stages have successfully separated from each other, and the Sorry, Rutherford the engine on Electron's second stage has ignited. And there goes the fairing. The fairing protects the payloads on the way to orbit, but once we're out of the thicker parts of the atmosphere, we don't really need it anymore. It's just, been, it's just been successfully jettisoned to make way for payload deployment approximately 51 minutes from now. So we've got a couple minutes until our next milestone coming up, but our trajectory is looking nominal and Electron is tracking for a successful flight. Trajectory remains nominal. Stage 2 propulsion remains nominal.
Just checking in with you guys again. Everything is looking good for Mission Control, and we've got another 90 seconds before the battery hot swap. So we're now at T plus 5 minutes and 45 seconds after liftoff, and like I said earlier, the next major milestone Vehicles coming up the is the hot swap of the batteries. Zero. If you've watched our launches in the past, you'll be familiar with this process, but if you're just joining us, I'll give you a quick rundown. The Rutherford engines replaced traditional gas turbo pumps with electric ones powered by batteries. Once these batteries have depleted of energy, they're really just dead weight, so to solve this problem, we perform a hot swap where we transfer power over from the depleted batteries to another fully charged one, and this provides a much more efficient ride to orbit. So our team will make this call soon, so we'll listen in. Coming up on HV battery hot swap. Yeah. HV battery eject succeeded. So as you just heard, we've had successful hot swap of the depleted batteries. Stage 2 propulsion is nominal and our trajectory continues to look good. One hundred seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Entering stage two burnout detect mode. All right, a quick recap of the Make It Rain mission so far. So we've made our way through a successful ignition and liftoff, stage one burn and separation from stage two, fairing jettison, and now the battery hot swap. So right now we're waiting for the second stage as we get closer to the engine shutdown ahead of the kick stage separation. So back to Mission Control Audio for the next mission milestones. Twenty seconds remaining. Stage 2 engine cutoff. Transfer orbit is nominal. Into stage separating. As you just heard there, we've got confirmation that the kick stage has separated from Electron in the lead up to payload deployment. In around 45 minutes time, Make It Rain's payloads will be deployed individually from the kick stage at predetermined Security. intervals. So for confirmation of this payload deployment, and of course to watch videos from liftoff, stay tuned to Rocket Lab's social media channels. Now with three flights under our belt for 2019, it continues to be a busy year for us. We've got frequent launches scheduled, the Photon program is cycling up, and construction on Launch Complex 2 is in full swing. This growth means there are some awesome career opportunities here at Rocket Lab. As part of our team, you'll work on technology and missions that are launching right now, not in years to come. We've got roles in Auckland and Mahia in New Zealand, as well as positions at our headquarters in Huntington Beach and also at Launch Complex 2 in Virginia. 
There are opportunities across the company, from, from our composites team, which manufactures Electron's carbon composite structure, right through to our mission management team, who work with our customers to streamline every step of the way to orbit. We're also looking for software engineers, avionics techs, and vehicle test engineers. At Rocket Lab, every voice counts, every idea can be explored, and then everyone contributes directly to our success. So make sure you check out some of the open positions on the Rocket Lab website. So just before we end the webcast, we have to give a shout out to one of our biggest fans, budding en rocket engineer Elliot Wertz. Stick with your dreams, keep building rockets, and we'll keep a seat ready for you in Mission Control. So with that, we'll be ending today's webcast of Rocket Lab's Make It Rain mission. A special thank you to our mission partners for choosing to launch on Electron. So from all of us here at Rocket Lab, thank you for joining us for our seventh Electron launch, and we'll see you guys here next time. This is Rocket Lab Mission Control, signing off. Aw, that was a, a sweet shout out to the, uh, what I'm assuming is a kiddo. Um, <laughs> creamy goodness says, meh, SpaceX launches are better. I give it a five sheep out of ten. It was rather, uh, it was rather short. I, they're not going to broadcast the payload separations. Um, and yeah, you, you're totally spoiled by SpaceX, who's like, all right, we're going to, you know, show you all of the, uh, the payload stuff. So, get back to that. Oh, yeah, I guess we're done waiting for the SpaceX, or not the SpaceX, the thing to do. Um, no, I don't, I think the sheep are, are okay. I didn't see anything with the sheep. They didn't really show the sheep after that. Um, the constant camera all the way up was really awesome. Um, as Veronica says, they, yeah, it's it's short, but it's it was full of information. They were able to answer a lot of your guys' questions, which simply because they're a little different than other rockets, I haven't processed all of that info in my head. <laughs> Zero goats out of ten sheep. And uh, I will never doubt M. Shupan saying add sheep to the card. It's written down on my card. So I've got most of the things crossed off. So I feel like that was a good... Oh, I think that was a good bingo card. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty quick launch. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Refs was the first one to mention sheep. Refs was the first one to mention sheep, and then you brought it up, and I was like, I don't know. All right, Refs Matt, M. Shupon, both of you, you ever say sheep again, I'm going to listen to you. Nine spots. It's not bad, and Rue's got two bingos, and Nur got bingo, and I think Planetary Pan got, got a line bingo, and anybody managed to get a full card? <sighs> um, dogs didn't bark. Does anybody really need the dogs to bark? Hey, Puck, Tink. Three line bingos. Oh, wow. Hey, speak. Come on, speak. All right, there's the, there's the dogs. And make it rain. All right, just in case anybody was waiting to cross off dogs barking. Okay. Hey, yeah, that's why we start early, Intrepid Red Fox. Uh, I try to start a little bit early so we can, uh, rows count. Uh, uh, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, all those count. Um, yeah, you have one line, one row. We're just calling them line bingos. Um, yeah. It, it's nice. Yeah, it is nice to have a, a active chat for a live launch. So, all right. So I know it's kind of late for a lot of people. So good night. Um, have a wonderful. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Have a wonderful insert time of day here. I, I am going to go to bed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to very quickly, as soon as I find the right thing, um, 
I'm sorry, I don't mean to yawn. I really don't. I'm so tired. But yeah, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. I'm going to very, very quickly go down. Yeah, he is almost a sheep. He is almost a sheep. I'm gonna um, do the super quick version of the wall of text because I'm tired. Uh, this is your reminder that uh, unless I do a stream tomorrow, there won't be any streams until the 7th or the 8th. Um, De we'll definitely be back on the 8th. I don't know if I'll stream on the 7th because that is so close to the holiday. Um, but yeah, thanks thanks everybody for watching. Um, we are brought to you by you. So yeah, we would not be here without you. I'm quite serious about that. Um, your financial contributions allow Dr. Pamela to pay myself and Susie and other people working behind the scenes at Living Wage. And that's pretty freaking awesome, guys. Um, this has been a production of the Planetary Science Institute, working collaboration with Youngstown State University here in Youngstown. Yeah, it's definitely summer, Ohio. Um, <laughs> Resma is, is singing something in... Uh, singing something in, in French, kind of. Or no, saying something in French. Um, yeah, also, Bennu, we're, we're trying to mark down Bennu. I don't know where we're at. The last time I checked, we were around 300 um, images away from being halfway done. If we do hit that during the vacation week, we'll totally, I will totally come on and stream during the vacation week, as long as it's not on the 4th. And yeah, you guys, you know, managed to get through 300 images within a few days. Yeah, sure, sure. I will totally stream in the middle of my vacation. Um, I think that's all for the super short. Oh, um, we archive everything on YouTube. So if you miss the video, if you miss the stream and you miss the video on demand, it's on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, you missed all the fun. To get notifications of when we go live, hit that follow button, because remember, follows are free. And uh, join our Discord, hang out with us on Discord. Um, that will also notify you when we go live. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, says Socking Cat says, all these recent launches are in the wrong time zone for Annie, which is hilarious because Annie's usually up this late. Annie's just not usually up this late with cameras on and makeup on and lights and having to talk and think. So, um, yeah, I am going to sign off. Uh, the Discord command is social. Um, so yeah, I'm going to roll the credits. Y'all have been awesome. I have no idea who's streaming. I am probably just going to let, um, I'm probably just going to let auto host take over because, you know, auto host. So yeah, again, thank you all a lot for tuning in. And, uh, you know, making sure my dogs are well fed on Cheerios. And really, for reals, for reals, I'm going to roll the credits. And I'm going to go to bed. And, yeah. Things and stuff. Oh, no. I just lost the thing that I need to click. Oh, look. There's Cheerios. Okay. Here's some Cheerios. Last Cheerio toss. And make it rain. Look, see, they're so excited about the Cheerios. It's adorable. It's adorable. All right. Thank you all. I really appreciate you all. And um, Tired Annie is going to go to bed. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to roll the credits now. All right. Bye.